Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a very basic pot holder. If you want it to just be functional, nothing fancier or really outstanding in any way, you can just take two squares that are just plain squares with cotton batting and make it look just like this. It's very functional. This will take you about 10 minutes to make. Or if you want to be able to hang it on the wall, I'll show you how to put a hanging loop on it so you can make it with or without the loop. But if you want something that's just a little more decorative, I'll show you how to put squares of fabric on it. This is a great scrap buster project making pot holders. So again, you can make it with or without the hanging loop. I'll even give you some suggested decorative stitch patterns on here. So if you want just a really quick project, make it plain, take you 10 minutes, or if you want to put a little more effort into it, it'll take you 20 minutes. So let's get started. Here are some scrap fabrics that I have. Whenever I'm done with a project I'm currently working on, if I have any leftover pieces, even if they're small, I'll cut them into squares that I can use on a future project at a later date. So I'm going to use these three inch squares on one side. Then here are the solid squares. I'm going to use one of these on the back. You can use these larger ones, like I said earlier, on the front and the back. I recommend you cut your larger squares anywhere from eight to eight and a half inches. If you don't have any scrap fabric, here are some suggestions. These are fat quarters. And out of one fat quarter, you can actually make two pot holders. They come in a variety of colors and prints. They're easy to get. You can buy them at Joann Fabrics and Crafts, quilt shops, on the internet and on Amazon.com. The other thing that you're going to need are two eight and a half inch squares of cotton batting or one cotton batting and one square of Insulbrite. Insulbrite is a synthetic fabric that helps to block the heat. For those of you who want to have just small pieces of fabric on your pot holder, mine are three inch squares. I selected nine of them. This is called a nine patch in the quilt world. So you're going to stitch the three together in each row. So these will be stitched together, then this row, and then this row. You'll use a quarter inch seam. So bring front sides together, stitch a quarter of an inch, and then add this one on, front sides together, and stitch a quarter of an inch. After you have stitched them together, the best way to press these seams is to first press each seam on the back side. Then turn it over and press the seams on top. And as you're pressing, you're pushing against that seam to get them all going in one direction. That's what's important. So now turn your rows over to where the back side is showing. All right, so right now all my seams are going in the, in the same direction, but I want to take this center row and flip it. I want it to go in the opposite direction. So now turn them back over to the front. Right, now take the rows and stitch them together. So match the seams. So you want to get those seams right there in the center and also make sure the seam on the bottom is going in the opposite direction of the seam on top. And I would pin these seams. All right. Then after you've got them pinned, go ahead and stitch a quarter inch seam all along here. Then stitch this row on, making sure the seams are in the opposite direction, and stitch it together doing a one quarter inch seam. After you have it all stitched together, 
again, press your seams on the back side. So just take that seam and press it. Take this one and press. Then again, press on top. And again, I like to lift the block a little bit and with my iron, push against the seam so that it all goes in one direction. And it doesn't matter if it goes north and south or east and west, as long as it's all in one direction so that you, when you put it all together, your pot holder will lay nice and flat. Stack together your two layers of cotton batting or one layer of cotton batting and one insole bright if that's what you're using. Place those two on top of each other. Take your square for the other side of the pot holder and lay it back side against your cotton batting. So you're looking at the pretty side of your square. Take this piece and lay it front side down and center it over the pot holder. Then you're going to trim all of this to the same size as your square. And that's why I like to have my fabric for the one side and the cotton batting a little larger because you never really know what size this is going to turn out when you have this many pieces together. So I would place a pin to hold it all in place and then go ahead and take a ruler and cut it all to the same size. So you would just keep turning it till you got it all the same size. Place pins around all four edges. Stitch one quarter inch seam around all four sides, but leave an opening here so that you can turn it front side out later. So you would start stitching here and back stitch a couple of times. Go down to the corner. Stop when you get a quarter of an inch away from this corner and leave your needle down through your fabric. Lift the presser foot up, turn your pot holder, lower the presser foot, and continue stitching. And do that at all four corners. When you come back here to this pin, then back stitch a couple of times. This is a walking presser foot. If you don't have one, you can still do this pot holder. But the reason why I recommend this walking presser foot is because it helps to prevent the fabric layers from shifting apart because it's real thick right now. So things will shift. So if you don't have one of these, make sure you're using plenty of pins to hold everything together. If you want to buy one, you could go to a sewing machine supply store, go on the internet and go to sewing machine supply websites. And you can also get these on amazon.com. After stitching all four sides, before you turn it front side out, trim some of the fabric off of this corner. So you're going to trim it about halfway down to where there's about an eighth of an inch of fabric left there. So I recommend you cut straight across the corner like that and then do a little bit off on each side. And this relieves some of the bulk that's in the corners. So do that on all four corners. One more thing I recommend you do before you turn it front side out is at the opening, fold this back a quarter of an inch, this top layer here. The bottom one is gonna be kinda hard to iron uh, back that way, but do at least this side and you'll find that when you go to close up the opening, it's going to be a lot easier. After that, then go ahead and go to one of the corners and begin turning it front side out. And take your time because you don't want to pull the stitches apart at your opening. If you want to make this a hanging pot holder, take a strip of fabric that's about two inches wide by five and a half inches long 
take that fabric and do this step at your ironing board. Fold it in half and press. Then fold each side into the center like that and press. Then fold it in half again all the way down and press. Then stitch right along this edge to close it up. Fold the bottom edge where the cotton batting is in one quarter inch and then fold that top piece over where you pressed it. So that's your uh, line where you know where it's that quarter inch. Before you close it up right there in the center, take this part for the hanging pot holder and insert it in there. Take the other end and insert it in there. And you can make this loop as big as you want. If you don't like it quite this long, you can always shorten it up. So once you've got it where you like it, then go ahead and pin it down. After pinning it down, then stitch close to the edge all along here to close it up and back stitch over your loop. One more thing that I recommend you do is to do some top stitching. That will help hold everything together during use and will keep the cotton batting inside together. And that is to do stitch in the ditch. So you would stitch right where these two pieces of fabric come together, right in that seam, down here and here and across here and here. Now, if you want just a little bit more decorative stitching, you could do a little extra stitching. So still stitch in the ditch, but then go down the center of each of the rows of squares. Then turn it the other way and go across this way. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you might have a, a stitch on your machine called the serpentine stitch. It's a quilting stitch, and a lot of the sewing machines have it now. And it's a wavy line, okay? Now, how you would go about it, I went in a different direction instead of going right over the seam, I went on a diagonal. So I stitched from this corner to that corner to that corner and then going down this way, connecting the corners together. So it kind of helps you stay on somewhat of a straight line and then turn it and go across the other way doing the same thing. As so you can see, you have a lot of different ways you can finish this pot holder off. Now for more pot holder projects, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. I hope you liked this video. If you did, would you please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, Click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner. Don't forget to click on that little bell and enter your email address so you can receive email notifications about my latest video. If you haven't received notifications, then go to your cell phone, click on settings and turn notifications in the on position. I'm Cheryl, this is Steve, this is Sue, and this is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time, and happy sewing!